What's up guys, welcome back, it's Easy Crunk Channel with you today, brand new video, Fundamentals 101. It's probably the best idea I have actually uh, done. Um, I think it's amazing that you guys can propose ideas and we can work together to make a video that everybody enjoys, everybody learns something. I think it's amazing that we can actually, uh, you know, become a community very soon. Um, I'm, I'm really working hard on this Fundamentals 101 idea and it's working really well so far, really well. A lot of topics for discussion and uh, there is so many things in the industry out there that I can talk about. I finally found a segment of videos that I uh, that I can just keep making, like keep making them. And not only it's fun to make them, it's also educational. So guess what we're doing today? That's right, we're talking about fuses. So let's get right into the video. So guys, welcome back. It's Easy Electronic Channel with you today, and I have an announcement to make before we get this video going. That's right. So, as you may know, I have a Twitter, a Twitter page right now, and uh, what's cool about it is if you actually follow me on Twitter, you will be able to find out first. Be the first one to find out uh, what projects will, will be coming out next, so you can prepare all of your parts. I think this is a great opportunity to actually, you know, follow the video and actually have all of your parts ready. So amazing. And uh, yeah, let's get this video started. Uh, there is a link in the video description. If you want the easy way, just click on it. It will take you to my Twitter page. So let's get this video started. So I go into my local e-call supplier, you know, they sell electrical things, whatnot. And you guys should have uh, seen the face of the salesperson when I said, I want to buy one fuse. I want to buy one fuse, you know, like a four, a 600 volt uh, fuse, 15 amp fuse. And the guy was amazed. Well, what do you need it for? Uh, I mean, a project. Um, okay, well, have fun. Um, you know, a guy was just like, why do you need a 600 volt fuse? Where are you getting 600 volts? Like, you, you, the guy could not wrap his ha head around it. Like, what am I gonna use a 600 volt fuse for? And, you know, video, of course, a video. So, fuses, HRC fuses, uh, regular glass fuses. What is the difference? What is the difference between different fuse uh, types? Well, we're actually gonna talk about it today. Surprise, surprise. So, you have different types of fuses. And uh, depending on the application uh, of, you know, depending on the product you want to use it on or the application, current rating and everything else, you wanna use a different type of fuse. For example, there are uh, different types of fuses, and I will actually show that to you. You'll have to draw it on a piece of paper, so let me just, uh, oh my, just don't go anywhere. Jesus, okay. So back to our favorite uh, notebook, paper. That's right, paper. Paper is the best way to write down your ideas and actually explaining people what is going on. So, we have different types of fuses. We have uh, HRC, which is high rupture capacity, and we have like dual element fuses, which can be HRC as well. And we have fast action, slow action, on all of that, all these different sub, uh, sub, uh, you know, sections of fuses like specialized fuses resettable fuses like it, it goes on and on just does not end but we will actually talk about two types today which is dual element uh and uh hrc 
And we are actually, well, because I have these glass fuses, we are, we're going to talk about these. These are fast action fuses. So you can talk about these as well. So what is a fuse? Well, you're transferring your current from point A to point B. Now, your current, let's say your current is only uh, 2 amps at normal condition. But you put a 10 amp fuse on it. Why do you put a 10 amp fuse? Well, a fuse is like a circuit breaker. A circuit breaker is, well, actually a good topic for a video, but a circuit breaker is a device that you would typically use in a residential application or in an electrical panel where if something goes wrong, it trips, but you can all, always reset it or push it and it would reset, which will actually allow you to turn it back on. You will get the power back. A fuse is a similar device but the only difference is you cannot reset it once it goes you usually throw it away and uh, because of the price of the circuit breakers in certain applications especially in industrial environments it will make sense for you to use a fuse and you use a fuse because of its enormous high rupture capacity what is a high rupture capacity? Well, that's actually what HRC stands for and everyone is buzzing about it. Oh, this meter has an a a HRC fuse and well, you know, it, you know, there is nothing special in it. Uh, in fact, you can add one yourself as I did in this video right here, which you can see taking a crappy multimeter part, which is good enough for the lab and putting a HRC fuse in it, making it safe. So, uh, as I will show you right now in this demonstration right here, we have a high voltage source. So assume that this is a circuit breaker that had opened or a fuse that had opened and there is nothing to stop the spark from arcing between uh, the contacts inside the fuse or uh, the circuit breaker. And this is actually what causes fires is that you have a really high voltage source that's capable of arcing between the contacts and uh, what will happen is it even though the circuit breaker or a fuse had opened it will still keep going and keep arcing so let's see what happens and we tripped the power supply but that's ain't gonna stop us because we're doing it again so as you can see right now, it just keeps arcing, keeps arcing and does not stop. And this is a really dangerous situation because right now it's milliamps of current and thousands, thousands of volts, but this can be hundreds of volts and thousands of amps inside your fuse. Now this can easily cause a fire, which is extremely extremely uh, dangerous and something you do not want to deal with and that's a big big problem when it does this easily catches fire all right so we just saw what happens when you have a high enough voltage to arc between your uh, contacts and even though the fuse would open or a circuit breaker would open this type of fuse would not cut it. As you can see, it's hollow inside. It's just a glass tube with a c ceramic um, rod and a uh, resistive wire wrapped around with it. Now, this one is a slow action uh, wall current fuse. So what this will do, and let me actually check the current rating on this one. And that's a 0.25 amps, so 250 milliamps that this poppy can take. Really, really small. Now, you would obviously have a significant voltage drop across uh, this fuse, and you know, that's really no concern when uh, you are dealing with um, 250 volts as this is rated for. So, this will have no problem putting out 250 volts, 
but it's not good enough for 480, 600 or even higher. So what do we do? So to solve that problem, we use a HRC fuse and that's right. So this puppy has a different type of rating on it. And that is this IR 10 KA. Now what is KA? Kiloamps. That's right. This little fuse can stop 10,000 amps current flow and it is rated for 250 volts same as the glass fuse whatever it's are but it's capable of stopping 10,000 amps now how does it actually do that we'll actually gonna take it apart in the end of the video and um, but first let's talk about dual element fuses so a dual element uh, fuse uh, has it has two characteristics. F first of all, has two elements uh, within one, and the way they do that is I did take fuses apart before, but um, I just want to draw uh, it f for you guys because this is so cool. So what they would do. And uh, this is really, uh, really cool. What they would do is they would have an area like this with the like holes in. Like this is a really, really thin um, a brass uh, sheet that will be inside of the fuse. This can be copper or really any other material depending on the application. So now this will be a slow blow or a time delay fuse because what it needs to do is current can easily pass through it but when it heats up when the current exceeds uh, you know the current can exceed the rating of the fuse for some time let's say it's powering a motor so when the motor starts it will be pulling for example five times more current than it's rated for so this will allow for that it, it will heat up but it will not blow because it's designed to pass a certain current through for some time but when it heats up it will start melting and when it melts it will open therefore uh, disconnecting the power now a dual element fuse introduces another um, another type of uh, fuse in it and uh, as far as I seen it it's like cutouts like this and uh, what that allows for is um, it's a fast action fuse so now they have combined a dual element now it's a dual element fuse because now it has two different types of elements so essentially this will be your uh, slow uh, blow or time delay fuse and this is fast action now your fast action would be actually rated precisely uh, to the current that uh, your uh, fuse is rated for but I really don't know how it works because the dual element fuses they never blow at the rated current uh, I, I, th I think it's kind of sad because uh, let's say this is a 10 amp fuse or well let's say this is a 100 amp fuse and it will never blow at the 100 amps it will get really hot but it would never blow it's always a little bit higher it's rated like a little bit higher so uh, that's the kind of thing like if you have a short circuit what would happen is your fuse would blow uh, here or here would never blow here but on the other hand if you have a load that's not short circuit but it's high demand load which will draw a lot of power let's say the motor got stuck the gearbox is messed up inside or whatever it cannot start turning this part will blow so by taking the fuse apart you can actually f figure out what happened to the device or a machine uh, you know, was it the short? Is the motor gone? Or if this is blown, probably it was overloaded for an extended period of time and now it's just open. So 
that's the, the type of thing. So now, once we have figured that out, let's actually open one of these things for the name of education, science, and we'll see what's actually inside to stop that dangerous spark. So, um, this was actually really, really interesting for me when I opened a fuse like this for the first time. Now, the reason why I'm opening uh, the small fuse and not the big ones that I... Well, this one I found, this one I bought, brand new. Uh, and uh, the reason why I'm doing that is I will be making a video of me actually blowing these things up, like exceeding their current rating by you know, tens, maybe hundreds of times and actually making the fuse blow up. Um, that would be a great video. I have a whole bunch of capacitors that uh, I want uh, to put a all in parallel and we will charge them with the AC mains voltage, 120 volts, which will result in 160 volt um, thing. But the capacity is so high that the energy that we will pass through this fuse when we short circuit the supply will be so intense it will just blow up no matter if it's this one this one or even this one i think this one will blow up possibly but uh, that's going to be a really interesting test but for now let's actually stop for uh, the small fuses and see how they work so uh this particular fuse is a 15 amp uh, fuse uh try on faraz shalmat made in germ no made in mexico no assembled in mexico but it does sound German. Uh, capability to stop 10 kiloamps. It's 15 amp fuse, 250 volts rated. Time delay. Okay, very important. So we should see uh, a different type of element, not something like uh, this as we have uh, drawn on paper, but uh, we should see a type of coil or something like that that would indicate that it's a time delay uh, fuse. So let's start opening uh, this thing up, if I can only focus. And let's actually see what makes this fuse stop the high voltage and how does it do it. It has a ceramic uh, shell, very difficult to cut through, I probably need safety glasses. I don't know if you see it, but here, what is this? What is this sand? Why does it have sand inside of it? Oh, what is this sand? That is silica sand. That's right. So, this is exactly what stops exactly what stops the high current and high voltage spark and this is a, a part of the element you can see it's copper it's shiny and you can see that thick thick high temperature um, ceramic tube that it's all encased in and um, we had pulled all of that out now this one actually uses uh, solder. So if I could only open it in a way that I can still uh, keep the element. Oh, I did manage to do so. Perfect. So I took the shell off. As you can see, I took the shell off. It's hollow. Okay. And this is actually the element so as you can see it's a thin thin copper trace because it's a chronic channel I'm gonna call it a copper trace and it has a, a little bit of solder on top now why does it has solder on top well it takes energy to melt something therefore this area will stay colder now it will actually cool because it's copper it will actually cool the whole strip and it will keep passing 15 amps through it now because it's precisely made it will only allow uh, 15 amps for about a minute when the whole fuse and the sand will heat up 
what will actually happen is that will actually also cool uh, the copper strip. Now, once it reaches the melting temperature of solder, it can no longer, you know, dissipate any more energy and the sand is hot. So it will actually keep heating up, heating up, heating up until the temperature is so high that the resistance increases to that point where it produces more and more heat. And that will actually blow this, uh, blow the current path, blow open. And uh, the sand will actually fill in the gap, extinguishing uh, the current flow and the fire. The potential fire will be emitted. Amazing. Now, um, the same way as the, these fuses, they work in the same way. Also, this works in the same way. Um, you can probably even hear sand inside so that's gonna be pretty cool so tell me down below what you want to see for next fundamentals 101 I I'm having a lot of fun making these videos it's educational it's something I really like so if you have a suggestion of what I should do next comment down below as always subscribe if you're a new guy here you would help the channel out a lot and leave a like that's right, leave two likes if you can, or even three, three likes, and uh, amazing. So, I'll see you in the next video.